Howdy folks, welcome back to Ugly Dog Lures and today we're going to do another segment with uh, Scott's Custom Baits. He's going to teach y'all how to build a two hook crawler harness and a three hook crawler harness. So I'm going to give the table to Mr. Scott and he's going to take off and go. Now, good afternoon folks, we're going to tie a couple bottom bouncer rigs. First off that's the bottom bouncer. This little crawler harness is going a little leader behind this and that bounces along the bottom and right after the walleye they go. And the string, I, the line that I use is a Berkeley Vanish line, fluorocarbon leaders. There's no give in that and pretty tough stuff and been using it for years and um, pretty sold on using that kind of line. I've tried to monofilament and it always It'll break. Yeah, I usually start out with this about a six foot piece of line. I'm going to use number two hook first. You stick it through the eye and then give it about ten wraps. Right back through the eye. I don't know what I forgot. Glasses. They're right there in front of me. Yep. <laughs> After the third strike, I'm putting my glasses on. Folks. Yeah, yeah, I know that feeling. Yeah, right, feed that through the eye. Give it a little lick. Since that knot down. Right, next hook. Feed it through the eye. And I give that about three and a half inches worth of spacing on that on a two hook. You can have a hook right at the top end of the worm and one about half ways down. You feed it through the eye and you wrap about ten wraps or so. Slip that down. Alright, there's that part. Now I'm going to put a little soft glow in the dark a white bead down by the hooks. A little styrofoam float and a hard bead. And we're going to go with two. I'm also glow in the dark. Put about two beads above that float. And I've got a quick change clevis or plastic instead of having the metal clevis. This metal clevis I use on the steel leader type material, but these plastic clevises I use there's a constant spinning on that string. The plastic won't cut the string. I'm going to take the blade. Blade to that clevis. And I always put one little bead above it, which is not too go. And at the top of the end of your line, attach the swivel at the very end of it. And just use a simple clinch knot on that one. That folks is a two hooked crawler harness. And that red five of diamonds. I've been pulling that one on my starboard side of the boat for about the last ten years and that's the only one I use because I know it catches fish. And everybody I'll I'll out fish them with that one lure right there. Now, whole rig right there it just attaches you just put that on the bottom bouncer your line hooks to your pole there you gotta get hooked up to it that's all right it's the glasses i feel your pain brother I can't see it so that rig once it's assembled like that this is going to tick along the bottom that's back there floating. This is going to drag out behind it. 
So when you're trolling with these, Scott, about how fast are you going to be trolling into your boat and pulling this My crawler harness? My average speed on that to make that blade turn correctly, 1.3 miles an hour. I go 1.3 to 1.5. Awesome. And the 1.3 miles an hour has been very productive for me. I just stay at that speed and it's not, uh, I give it enough, I'll put it in the water beside the boat and let it down a little bit and I can control the speed. Once I see that blade start spinning, I know I'm good there at that speed. I go a little bit faster as long as that blade's rolling. Then when I do this next one, I'm going to show you where I have to go a little bit faster. This is a number size 4 blade. This next one will build a number 5 size blade, and you're going to have to go 1.5 to 1.8. You'll have to go a little bit faster just to make that next one rotate. Just to make the blade spin. Just correctly. to make the blade spin properly, you've got to increase your speeds. You have to get up to, you know, 2.3, 2.5 mile an hour. It'll be a little slow. It'll be a little faster for a larger blade, but, you know, you get going too fast and your bottom bouncer is not going to be on the bottom. It's going to be flying. Yeah, it's going to be bou bouncing through the water. Yeah, it'll be up flying too, too shallow and you're not going to So gonna don't be let good. me drive the boat. Huh? So we don't let me drive the boat. Hey, uh, I'm kind of particular about my toys. <laughs> no, I meant that I don't She's go slow. She's a speed demon. <laughs> oh, hot rod, hot rod Andy in the boat, full throttle, away we go. Yeah. Hey, that's even my name. That's my middle name. Okay. That so my dad in. did that on purpose, I think. <laughs> okay, now we're going to do the three hook. The three hook is one I prefer using, and I'll show you here once we get done with it, what the game is about that. The two hook, I like the two hook. One, I'll put them a little bit closer because I'll use leeches when we can get them. Most of the time we use night crawlers, but that leech is a uh, pretty deadly dude for a while. And it's not a, it's a introduced species, you know, you don't go dumping them in the lake. At one, you, you, pay, you pay good money for leeches and they're kind of like shoe leather, they last all day. The wet bass bites it in half. Yeah, they will last longer than I do because I don't last all day anymore. Okay, on a three crawler, on a three hook, I'm going to go about two and a half inches on the spacing on the first two hooks, and the third one will be the same thing. So normally I don't have somebody sitting right next to me and I pull that Yeah, he keeps trying to punch me in the side of the yeah, head. Yeah, I'm Maybe trying to. you should move. I don't want you hurt. He, he's okay. I'm watching what I'm doing. <laughs> I mean, usually I don't have nobody right there and I'm slinging that line out there. Kind of well, I'm learning because in my whole life I've never seen one of those built. A crawl harness? No, I've never used one in my life. Oh, well, we're going to get you on the water in the springtime we'll show you how well they work. I'm ready to go now. <laughs> yeah, a little bit late in the season for a crawl harness. Now, when I put that third hook on there, about that's about six inches. Your night crawler, he's going to stretch out to about six inches and put them in the water and everything, so they, there's about what your spacing will be. So, Scott, how many years have you been building these things now? On the crawler harnesses, I've been doing these about ten years. You know, just a lot of, you know, development on how it how it works. I mean, there was somebody that, there was a lady up at the lake and she's known by all the locals that she catches all the fish. And she said red blade. We built some red ones and I just happened to have some stuff and I got to tying and well you know I come up with a red one and I took it over there. We were at her cabin when we took it over there and I said like this one? He goes, yeah. She was kind of impressed that I made one that quick and we got out there on the water and started using it and boom 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 started to catch a fish. Well, that's awesome. So you can learn stuff from other people. Yep. So now I've got my three hooks on there and we'll put oh yeah I had one of them. Let me put that we'll start this different. I have a soft glow soft glow green bead we're gonna put down there first. So the little glowing beads I think it kind of look like an eyeball or something. You go trolling at night and you just got that little added effect. 
So you charge these beads during the day in the sunlight? Yeah. Is there them. any certain time frame that they will stay charged or do you need to pull them up every once in a while and change crawler harnesses being down in the deep water? Uh, that bead probably stayed glowing for 35, 40 minutes, maybe 45 minutes. And if you're running really deep water, you just reel it up. You're going to check your bait often. If you thought you got a bite or you hit a tree or something and you had a fish hit it and miss it, your bait's gone. You're fishing with an empty hook. It uh, behooves you to pull it in and check it. You know, and when you do, you back up in the light and beads will charge back up again and right back to blowing. I mean, the effectiveness of trolling at night. I mean, we haven't done too much of it because it's kind of dangerous getting out on that water at night. You better watch the weather. Uh, in this country, you're dang sure better. You get out there in the middle of the night trolling and that wind comes up on you and you didn't know it was going to blow, you could be in bad trouble in a hurry. Yeah, that's nothing for us to go from calm to 70 mile an hour winds in a matter of five minutes in this country. Yeah, I've so. seen it flat calm like glass and the next thing you know you got four foot waves and that's not fun at three or four in the morning. No. Quite dangerous and the people that have been fishing with me in that instance and have gotten caught on the water were quite happy they had Captain Scotty to get into the boat ramp safe. They were a little wet but <laughs> they got home. Okay, we got... On this larger large blade, I put two floats on it and give a little bit more float action. It blades a lot heavier. And we got a another quick change clevis here. See on these quick change clevises, if you want to, you can take that blade right off that clevis and change it without taking the whole harness apart. So if they're hitting a different color and you happen to have a lot of blades on hand, you can. So if a man wanted to buy those quick change clevises. Where could he find those? Uh, I buy all my supplies from a place up there in South Dakota called Hagen's. And they have, in a large quantities, you know, I'm buying per thousand. And they're not as, as expensive as if you're going to a big box store and paying for over the counter, you know, like the hooks. Like you do, you're buying the hooks from Mustad and buying yeah. a box of a thousand. I've learned to do that also. Because yeah. if you're just going to going to a retail store and you're paying two dollars for ten hooks you know that's not good when you're tying hundreds of hooks now I'll put the swivel on there to get the last clinch knot on this need to get these glasses off get dizzy from it you can use that we're getting almost down here okay All right, now it's tied. That's what the three hook crawl harness looks like. And I got just so I have to bring a little plastic worm just to show you how I normally, well, you know, he'd be the short. Normally take the take the worm and just the start of the worm up at that top hook. That's a little shorter rubber than what I normally use. I'm using live bait instead of these plastics. And the trick on the crawler harness, the biggest trick about a three hook crawler harness, when you got the last hook goes on there, you want that last hook within an inch to half inch the end of that worm. Right at the end. The walleye's gonna come up and he's gonna nip at it. He's gonna take a bite at it and he's hooked. You're watching your pole. You see your pole tapping and he's taking a little He's taking a little bite of it and let him let him eat. Don't get in a hurry the second you see that. You start seeing that pole jump. Don't don't smack it right away. Let him let him let him eat. And sometimes I'll uh, on the night crawler I'll hook that a little short between the two on the first two hooks and put a loop in that worm. And if you put a loop in that worm, that'll cause that worm to rotate a little bit. And some some guys say to leave it straight and let the worm run straight but if I've got it where that worm will roll it's just an added vibration yeah well, that's what a three hook added action is what added it is. a little bit of action that's there's a three hook crawl harness rig well that's pretty awesome didn't take long but that will catch fish 
I thank you all very much, Charlie and Melissa, for inviting me over to do this, and I enjoy it, and lots of fun. Well, tell them about your website and all that stuff's going to be coming up. I'm um, uh, coming up with, I just got my LLC from the state, and the Facebook page is being worked on. The website's going to be coming up real soon, but you can look at the start of the Facebook page is Scott's Custom Tackle. Take a look and give me a like. And as soon as the first of the year rolls around, we're going to set it in gear, put some pricing on it, and we'll be ready to go. We're Webs going with it. And we're coming, folks. The stuff's been well tested. It's catching fish. And I can't wait for everybody to get out there and catch a few fish like I've been enjoying. The people in my boat, we've been catching fish and having a lot of fun. And you can, too. All you got to do is call me up. Thank you very much. Deal. So folks, this was a, a short little uh, how to build a two hook crawler harness and a three hook crawler harness with Scott uh, Scott's Custom Tackle. Be sure to go on to his Facebook and, and check him out. He's got some very, very nice stuff and it's and it's proven because I own quite a bit of it myself now. Uh, I've been getting some from him. So, uh, and I will be going to the lake. We're going to get you in the boat, buddy. Yeah, we're going this summer a bunch more than I got to go last year because they shut our lakes down here. And we was all mad about that. We uh, we missed the spring bite. Yeah, we the did. spawn come along and we weren't allowed on the lake and I consider it a win for the fish. <laughs> there was an uninterrupted spawn and the fishing ought to be great in the next couple of years. I hope so. Yeah, it was a tell you, time to create tackle. Yeah, we, you know, uh, go to your creative side and think things through and start creating new things. Uh, and that's kind of what I did. But, you know, anytime Scott even comes to the house, he just goes straight to the shop. He don't even go to the door <laughs> because I'm always out here. Unless I'm working, you know, 14, 16 hour shifts, I'm out here. Or, or I'm just so damn tired that I just go to bed at six o'clock. You know, old people do that sometimes. Yeah. But uh, yeah, uh, be sure to go and check him out. Uh, this is our second video with Scott. So uh, these are proven baits. They're great baits. Uh, he'll have his pricing up and all of that. That's that's what he's got to do on his end. So you folks have a blessed day, and we'll catch you later. Thank you much. You're caught on the camera because it's still going. Oh, well. It's going to be on the video now. Voila. <laughs> I'm going to have to put bass on mine with a marker. <laughs> Ended it with a joke. <laughs> that worked, didn't it? Yeah, that's a good, that's a good video. Oh, that was funny. I never in my life.